Good afternoon, this is Blaze. Once again, we're doing a series on homelessness in Skid Row focused primarily on the challenge of bathrooms. Today, we'll have General Jeff talk to us about one of these little tiny cracks in the wall, and there are many all over Skid Row where people have to release themselves. Two, 3,000 people have to have a bathroom, and their needs are not being met by the city. So, here's General Jeff. Thank you. My name is General Jeff. We're coming broadcasting live from Skid Row. When I say Skid Row, downtown Los Angeles, California, USA, Planet Earth. That's Planet Earth, USA, California, downtown Los Angeles, Skid Row. This is Fifth and Wall Street right here, right in front of the Los Angeles Mission. Caddy Corner, literally right across the street from the Los Angeles Police Department Central Division. The reason why we're here, because we're talking to you about toilets or the lack thereof. When you talk about homelessness, that means people that don't have homes, so obviously they don't have access to toilets. There's a lot of funding, a significant amount of funding in the millions of dollars that's going towards this community and the nonprofits that are in this community in regards to offering uh, uh, restroom facilities for the homeless folks. So now, if you want to say that there on average, they say there's roughly 10 to 15,000 residents in Skid Row, but they also say there's about, of the 10 to 15,000, there's 2,500 to 3,000 people who live on the streets. So if you got about 3,000 people living on the streets, there's 3,000 people without access to public toilets. Let's show you right, what reason why we're here on this corner to show you what the, some of this funding that they're getting is going towards. So right on the side of this Los Angeles Mission, what we know is a multi-million dollar entity that's been existing for over 60 years. This is a cubby hole, and as you can see, it's a gated, gated fencing that actually goes, leads to a dead wall. You see, they actually put up money for a steel plate, and you can see there's number two on the steel plate, but you can also see a, 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 a whole lot of runoff from excessive urine and it comes, and as you can see, it comes not only from the wall all the way to the sidewalk. So as people walk through the sidewalk, they step in that, all the way out to the curb. And as you can see, it piles up in the curb. And so eventually what's on the curb ends up in the storm drains and then goes on out to the ocean. And so there's a whole lot of skid row stench that a lot of people talk about when they come to our community. And this is what they're gonna see. So not only, so not only is there one of these on this wall, but there are three of these right here on this one wall. And so when we give our skid row tours, this is one of the first places that we would like to show people because this is a very important part in terms of the philosophical differences of what the residents feel skid row should be and what the skid row nonprofits are providing. It's two sides to every story, and this is not a good story that they're projecting. So now, in addition to these facilities, obviously every nook and cranny um, is used by our community. So for instance, on this row of cars right here, you know, say like a, a woman, it's not, it may not be, it's not safe for anyone to, to actually use a, a, a cubby hole. You know, LAPD says that they don't want porta, porta potties, and so this is the next option right here. And so, what do women do? They go in there and do the same thing as well. Some women take the option of just going right in between cars. And, you know, even in the middle of the day, they have that. So, there's a thing called APTs, Automatic Public Toilets, here in Skid Row, and there are five of them. And a lot of times, they don't even work. So, when you think about a 50-block community, 10 to 15,000 residents, 2,500 to 3,000 people on the sidewalk with no access to toilets and most importantly, no access to anywhere to wash your hands. So this is winter season. You know, we talk about lack of hand sanitizer, a lack of, a lack of water access. And so now we're talking about a lot of hand-to-hand -hand contact that happens here. And there's a lot of transfer of germs, diseases, and things of that sort. So they wonder why there's, you know, fire station number nine is the busiest fire station in this community, in the nation. And because they're in this community, there's a lot of services because there's a lot of germs and bacteria and disease. So now, how do we cut down on that? For one, we can cut down like the, the, those that would like to volunteer and instead of bringing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, bring hand sanitizer. Excuse me, let me step over a little bit because I can feel some of the stickiness get on the bottom of my shoe. 
But hand sanitizer is definitely, you know, you can never have enough hand sanitizer. In the winter months, it's very valuable and important to our community because, you know, people don't have access to water and soap to wash their hands and stay clean. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's so disturbing that, you know, we're making this video so that we hope that people can really understand the truth because, you know, not only is it, you know, in, we're not trying to embarrass the mission. What we're trying to do is we're trying to show the inhumane conditions that are here in Skid Row. And so um, there's no decent places to, to, for, for a human being to relieve themselves. Not only is it limited to the homeless folks, you know, in the daytime, which also right across the street, they call this the toy district. So you got a lot of mom and pop stores literally right across the street. You got people that drive that come all from all over across, not only Los Angeles City, but the county of Los Angeles, it's December, it's the holiday, so it's Christmas time. A lot of people want to do Christmas shopping and they come here to the toy district for the tremendous wholesale prices and discounted products. And so when they shop here, where do they relieve themselves? So they pay, they park their cars, they go in these stores. These stores are super small and don't have restroom facilities inside of them. So they too may have to use a wall or a nook or a cranny. And so if this is supposed to be a vibrant downtown that's, uh, you know, we're, we're getting ready to put a, offer a bid for the Olympics in two, the Summer Olympics in 2024. You know, the bid has to go in September 2017. And we're gonna have even more international tourism and commerce flowing. But where are the people gonna relieve themselves if the people here that are here already can't relieve ourselves properly and in a humane way? You know, thinking men, women, and children without a place to use the bathroom. Think about it. All right, so there you have it, a brief uh, piece by General Jeff about this one particular place. But imagine that thousands of people are doing this all over Skid Row. It's unsanitary, it's wrong, it's inhumane. Go to your congressman, go to your mayor, find out what are they planning on doing. Thank you. Blaze out.